эфире побилась в Афетке. Сейчас на сцену я бы хотела пригласить тренера Диаджио Баракедами Румынии и главного тренера Диаджио Баракедами по Восточной Европе Стева Эдемоми Кабара на салфетке. I wish you welcome everybody and who, who do not have a napkin, please take a napkin. Raise your hand if you do not have a napkin because the session is called Stephanomics. So keep your hand up please if you do not have a napkin. We need everybody needs a napkin. We have here extra napkins. You will see like in a second because everybody was so curious why do you give us napkins? Please do not blow your nose with your napkins. You can do it if you want, but we have extra napkins. So, I want to start with a question. What can you do with a napkin? Each one of you have a napkin in your hand. I will give you like two minutes. Just please show us what can you do with a napkin. Start holding it in the most creative way you can do. It's okay? Can you please? Two minutes and we will find one winner. We will see who will win the napkin contest. Two minutes starts now. If you do not have a napkin, please let us know we will provide a napkin. Let us see what can you do with the napkin. No ideas? Try something. Try something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for sure you will not win it with it. <laughs> Blowing your nose. Ah, nice. I like it. I like it. So, let's see how creative you are. You don't, you don't have a napkin? No? Let's do it. Still have napkins? You will see why this exercise is relevant from the session where you are here today. Thank you very much. Who, who do not have napkins? There. Please give a napkin there. Napkins, welcome. Have a napkin and start folding and make a small thing from a napkin. One more minute, one more minute. Alexei, do you have a napkin? Take a napkin. 50 more seconds. Let's see your napkin creativity, please. How creative you can be with a napkin. Here you have a napkin, start posing, do something nice from a napkin. We need a napkin here. <laughs> 30 more seconds, 30 more seconds. Let's see who's the most napkin creative in the room. Super nice, how's that? Ah, looks great, looks great. That's creative, that's creative. In case it starts raining, you have something. 10 more seconds, 10 more seconds, I like that, I like that. Very, very creative, let me show you. So, this is creativity. Thank you very much. <laughs> Three, two, one. Stop, please stop holding the napkins. Can you show me what you have? I like this, I like the flower. Flower, flower. A plane, nice, nice plane. I did also a flower. The, the flower trick, it's a very nice trick when you walk into a bar and you want to impress a lady. You make a flower out of the napkin and you say enjoy. Cheers. So, who's the winner? I think uh, it will take longer yeah. time to find the winner with the napkin. Thank you very much for participating in the napkin contest. <laughs> We are all winners. Yeah, we didn't came here to compete. We came here to share. And the idea is what can you do with a napkin? We will start from this question and we will see what can we do with a napkin. My name is Paul Skurlia. I think you presented a few things about me. Uh, I'm the head trainer for Eastern Europe for the Ajobar Academy. Who didn't hear a thing about the Ajobar Academy until now? So a few, a few persons. The Ajubal Academy is the biggest training platform from the world. Until this day they train 
that the delivery training for bartenders, waiters, bar managers, bar owners in 64 countries around the world. We train half a million of bar staff. The main purpose of the Agile Bar Academy is to raise the bar in the hospitality industry. And we focus very much on how to deliver the services and how to deliver good drinks. Because you can deliver good drinks, but if you do not have good, uh, good services, you lose it all. And if you have good services, but you do not have good drinks, it's not going. It's not going to work. So there are two things that are very important in the Ajumar Academy. Great drinks and great services. Today, we will talk more about how to deliver a great service. And how to put more accent on a great service. And how is a napkin, how can a napkin help us delivering consistently amazing services? That's why I need you to fold a napkin. You will see in a moment. Uh, I have, I'm from Romania, from Transylvania, and I have a, a consultancy company. I do bar consulting around uh, Romania and Eastern Europe mostly. It's called Brigada, the company, which is Brigade in English. I knew that it's a, like, it was a, uh, like a movie show, Brigada, here. Yeah. So everybody knows about it? Yeah. Brigade is like a, a group of people who are sharing the same passion. So we are a group of people from the hospitality industry who are sharing the passion of hospitality. So we share the passion of hospitality and we try to increase the services everywhere we go. So both things, both of my jobs are the Ajabar Academy, raise the body of hospitality industry and Brigada, delivering bar consulting in the hospitality industry, again, to improve services and raise the body of the hospitality industry. Very short about me. The, sh the session today will be a little bit shorter. I, I know that it's late and I wanted to, to compress it a little bit to make it easier to understand, easier because we all want to go and have uh, some drinks and party. <laughs> That's why I don't want to keep you here too much. So, Business of Bars, it's a platform from the Ajo Bar Academy. In the Ajo Bar Academy, we train waiters, we train bartenders, we train barbacks. And in Business of Bars, it's a small part of the Ajo Bar Academy where we train managers, where we train owners to deliver and to improve their, their, their bars and their restaurants. To increase the profitability by increasing the services, by training the team, by creating a better system in the bar. So, I want to put a hand in the air who is a manager or, or an owner of a bar. Super, so you will like very much the session. Who is a bartender? You will like it also. <laughs> Who is a waiter? Oh. Nice, you will like it. Who is something else? Wow, oh, quite a lot. What is that something else? Can you tell us? Just one one word, something else. Brand ambassador? What? Open a bar, super. So you want to open a bar, you will like it. Who, who else is working something else? Don't be shy. Okay, I'll come here. Please, let's interact. Please. Say, you want to open a bar. Super. It's a nice thing. Who else? One more. One more and then we, we get further. Who else? What other things we have here? What? So you have a cafe, but you want the bar. Super, very nice. So you want to go from the morning, you are lazy in the morning and you want to go in the night, huh? <laughs> you like it more in the night, super. So, the Ajo Bar Academy, Business of Bars, as I told you, it's a platform from the Ajo Bar Academy for owners and for managers. But the moment I started as a bartender, like eight years ago in Romania, I started as a bartender. I was so passionate about my craft and about bartending that I started learning more and more and more. Once I started learning, I started competing in cocktail competitions. So at some point after fail and fail and fail, I started winning cocktail competitions. So I had the chance to represent Romania in Japan, in South Africa, in world class, in uh, Bulgaria, in France. I travel a little bit part of the in cocktail competitions because I was very passionate about it. And I liked so much the craft of creating cocktails and doing nice things and delivering uh, the whole experience to the guests when it was, was 
it was in front of me to see the sparkle in his eye that how, how much he liked the drink. So that was a very nice thing for me. But it was one moment that changed my whole career. It was the moment when I was still a bartender with no responsibilities, just bartending, and I started taking as a manager. I started thinking, what are the guests looking in the bar where I'm working? Why do they come there? Why do they, they don't come there? What do they like there? What do they don't like there? How is the music? How is the temperature? How is the light in the bar where I work? How is every single detail that it's created the whole experience of a guest? Because the guest experience in a bar, in a restaurant, is not only drinks or food or the services. Because the guest experience is every single detail. The moment you enter, the welcoming from the enter, the light, the music, the toilets, one big, big, uh, big touch point. All these together are creating an experience. So the moment I, was sta I started thinking about bar experience and restaurant experience and what would guests look in the bar where I'm working, that was the moment when I started thinking as a manager and that was the moment when I changed my career. I, I still worked as a bartender for a few years. Even now I'm still doing guest shifts around the world from time to time. But the mentality remained, how can I do the bar be more profitable? more successful and a better bar. So this is the platform the Akbar Academy business of bars. It's a platform for managers and for owners, but if you're a bartender, if you're a waiter, this is the moment when you start to think as a manager. Take direct responsibility of the success of the, or the failure of your bars. Don't put that in, uh, uh, on the back of your manager. You can be a manager and you are a manager if you think like one. Thank you very much. <laughs> for the waiters, for everybody. Because it was developed by a guy named Sean Finder from the United States who owns a company called Barmetrics. Barmetrics is the biggest company of bar consulting in the world. They did like bar consulting for more than 7,000 7, bars and restaurants around the world. Among those bars are the Hard Rock Cafe, Dead Rabbit, and many other good bars. So Sean Finder developed the eight modules for managers and for owners to improve the bar's profitability and the bar's success. And Diageo bought these modules and started delivering these modules, business of bars, to the managers and to the owners who are collaborating with Diageo. Because they noticed, bar methods, the, the, the shopping of this guy who is absolutely a genius, they noticed that top 10% of the bars and restaurants around the world are working smarter and are working harder than the other bars. But the most important thing is that top 1% of the bars and restaurants around the world are not working smarter, are not working harder, they are working fundamentally different. And these are the principles that you can find in the Akbar Academy Business of Bars. Fundamentally different principles that you can apply in your bar. You don't have to work harder. You don't have to work smarter. You just need to work different than all the other bars. Because we can we can notice only what's different. This is how we perceive the world by comparing things. We can we know that it's cold because we know that it, uh, it's hot. We know white because you know black. There is light because there is dark. So only by comparing, we, we can perceive the world. If all the bars from Ukraine are doing the same thing, they can do it in the best way possible, but there won't be any difference, because everybody's doing the same thing. So you have to change things, do things fundamentally different. Try to change things, try, try to, to step up, take a, a step in front of the others and take the lead. Create your niche, create your product. Innovate the services. And by innovating, I'm not saying to invent something. Because I don't think you can invent anything anymore. Any invention around the world was like a mix of other inventions before of them. So don't be afraid to take some inspiration from here, from here, from here, and to put all the inspiration in your place. And be different in your own way. The session outcome. So when when you will leave this session, in a few 
30 minutes, you will know how to create a consistent simple service strategy that will fit on a napkin. So that's why I was the question at the beginning, what can you do with a napkin? You can create a simple and consistent service strategy that can fit on a single napkin. I don't know how many of you do you know that after the Second World War, Churchill and Stalin, they divided Europe on a napkin. If you, if you search on Google, you can still find that napkin. And you see like Romania 60-40, Ukraine 40-60. Uh, and you see all the countries, how they divided actually the whole Europe on a napkin. Because the good strategies do not have to be very complicated. They do not have to be like a book, because nobody reads a book in these days. The new generation and us, I mean the new generation, we do not read that much, even though I like to read a lot. But when I go into a new place, if they give me like a manual with a strategy, with this is our service strategy, here you go, have it. I will not love, love it. Maybe I will put it somewhere on the shelf and I will forget about it. And I will do whatever I want to do. So that's why this session, when you go out of this room, I would like, even before, I will do, we will do like a three minutes exercise, you can take your phone out and put like the simple service strategy for your business that will fit on a napkin. And it doesn't have to be only for a bar or for a restaurant. I did this service strategy even for uh, the bar consulting company. I have a small company who's creating clothes for bartenders. I did the, bar, the service strategy also for that clothes for bartending company. So for every single business that you have, the simpler you can make it, the more success you can have with it. Because people will, will learn it. If you cannot articulate your service strategy on the back, back, back of the napkin, it means you do not have one. Let's imagine what's happening in our industry. In the moment, when we have a new employee in our industry, you have a new waiter or a new, or a new bartender, What's happening when a new bartender, his first day at work, usually the head bartender or uh, another bartender is taking him and he say, okay, the moment you open the door at 7 o'clock in the morning, so you open the door, you put the alarm, 4434. Okay, then you go into the bar. No, no, before going to the bar, you have to open the windows. Before opening, do, after opening the windows, you have to go into the bar, you start cleaning the glasses, and then you put the napkins in the, uh, on the bar, then you put the straws on the bar, then you, you prepare the espresso machine, then you put cup for espresso, then you put the plates for espresso, and then you put napkins for espresso, then you put sugar, then you put honey, and then you, you come here in the back, and you take ice, and you take the ice, and you put it on the station, and after putting the ice on the station, you need to clean everything that the guys from, uh, from the uh, last day didn't clean. So then, you clean all the glasses on the bar, <laughs> So they have to learn a lot of things, like thousands of things, while they still have to create a connection with the guest. So they have to learn the recipes in the first day. They, I had a problem when I was going into a new bar, I had a problem with the names of the colleagues. <laughs> I, I could not learn the names of the colleagues. I could not learn the cigarettes because I don't smoke. I could not learn the prices of the products that I'm selling. It was hard for me to learn all the recipes, especially if the menu was like this. <laughs> It was hard to learn everything, so I was continuously focusing, thinking not to, not to screw it up, not to, not to uh, do some mistakes. And I was so focused in the things that I had to do in a business, that I, was, I, I forgot to smile. I forgot to, to create a connection with my guest. Because everything I was doing, I was doing for him, but I didn't do it. I had so many things in my mind, I had to figure it out. Who's the boss? Who's the alpha male in the group? <laughs> What am I allowed to do? What I cannot do? So there are a lot of things you have to learn. And if you don't have a simple service strategy that every single employee should learn, you don't have any strategy of services. Because nobody is learning. They are just doing what they did at their uh, former uh, working place. And usually, we tell to a new employee 3,000 things we tell him once. First day when he's working, entering into a bar, we tell him, we tell him, okay, you have to do all these things 
learn all these things, prices, menus, names, etc., and be nice to the guests. And after you finish your shift, you have to do all these things, but, but be sure that you, will, you do these things because in the morning your opponents will kill you if you're not doing it. And we tell them once. And then we, 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 we have the expectations from him, okay, you should do this. I, I told you already. You should know what you have to do. And uh, it's perfectly normal when the old colleagues, the colleagues who are elder than him in the business, who knows all the 3,000 things and are doing all the 3,000 things, but when you go and you take the bar after the new guy, after the new guy went into the bar, you take the bar and the bar is a mess. He didn't do the 3,000 things. And you get frustrated and you say, he's not working enough. You're not good enough. And you start th saying bad things to him. And this is like the, the whole uh, uh, tunnel that's happening. It starts going down and down, the whole service, the team starts going down. The relationships in, in, in the team starts to be worse and worse. Because there is no service strategy. Nobody knows exactly what they have to do. They know we have to do a lot of things. But in the moment we open the doors and guests come into the bar, we have no idea what we have to do. We have to, I don't know, we have to serve them. We have to give them to drink. It's not very concise what they have to do. It's not simple enough so everybody would understand what do they have to do. The ideal formula is telling three things and keep repeating it 1,000 times. You have to do just three things. That's it, only three things. So every single day you, you enter into the world, world and you open the gates and the gates are coming to the bar. Think about these three things and do it over and over and over again. And if you do these three things, three simple things, your job is a success, our place is a success, guests are happy and they are coming back, everybody is happy. So what are those three things that every single employee can do? <laughs> smile, you've been to the session of yesterday, huh? Oh, yes, yeah, smile is one of the things, yeah. Say hi, okay, nice, super, super. More. <laughs> What are three simple things that you can say, do to the guests? Like transforming this into the stra service strategy. Eye contact. Eye contact is very important, yeah? What else? Talk to them. Talk to them. But not dirty. Talk nice to them. <laughs> so we need to take, like, do a big brainstorming with everybody. Take the whole team, do a brainstorming and say, okay guys, let's find three things that everybody should do, no exception. If you do not do it, first time it's okay, second time you have to pay, third time you leave. This is a strategy. Everybody has to do the three things, not so hard, it's only three things. You don't have to do 3,000 things, you have to do three things. So, what are those three things? I can give you some example. First one, make them smile. Who was in the session from, from yesterday at the main stage? So you know about how, how, how important it is to smile. If you see the guest smiling, you know that he likes what he receives. If he's not smiling and he's angry, either he had a fight with his friends, either he does not like what he got. So the first thing, make him smile. How can you make a person smile? Talk to him. Welcome him. At the entrance, when you see somebody, hello, hello, welcome, nice to see you. And he's like, hey. People will smile when they are feeling important. If you feel important enough, you will smile. If you do not feel important at all, you cannot smile. It happened to me once, I've been to a coffee shop. And I was very relaxed, I had a nice day. And uh, the barista was talking with the lady, and I was exactly near the lady, and he was just talking with her, and I was staying there, and he, he ignored me, like for three minutes, was ignoring me, just talking to the lady. And I felt so unimportant that 
To be honest, I, I, wasn't, I, I, I didn't go went into that coffee shop again from that moment. And after he finished with that lady in three minutes, he looked at me and said, ah, hello. <laughs> hello, thank you. And I didn't smile, <laughs> to be honest. If you can make your guests smiling, that's a big step. Because usually what's happening, as we discussed a little bit about yesterday, in the society from these days, people are not happy anymore. We have plenty of problems. You have political shit that are happening and we don't like it. City where we live, are, there are happening a lot of bad things. Our job is much more stressful. Many of you of, of us have problems in the family. Uh, there are a lot of problems in the society today. And think about it, when you go to a bus, when you go on the street, when you go into a public place, how many smiling faces do you see? How many can you see, usually, in a day-to-day -day life? Zero. <laughs> zero or almost zero, because this is our society, unfortunately. We are not teaching people, our children, how to keep smiling, because they are only smiling. They are not, they don't, you do not have to teach them to smile. They are smiling, but we teach them how to not smile. We teach them how important it is, uh, is the job that they have to go. Even if they do not like their job, they have to go to the job to, to get some money to feed his family. So he had to go to the college to learn, even if he don't, do not like to learn at all. You have to go and do that. And we are actually, we are teaching our children how not to smile. If we let them smile, if we let us smile more often, we can make people around us, we can have a big impact into the world. We can start changing the world because the world needs to start changing. We need to see more happy faces in the world. We don't need more grumpy faces because unfortunately the definition of success today, if you are very successful and you have a lot of money and a lot of properties and you are like a very important person, you are not smiling anymore because you are so stressed. You are having so many important things that you forgot how to smile. And this is unfortunately, this is the way society today is projecting success. An important person who's not smiling, most, most of the time is depressed. I don't know how many of you, you know that uh, the most successful partners around the world these days, who you see only on Facebook, Instagram, who everybody wants to be like that, are chronically depressed. They look so nice in the, in the spotlight, but in their home, they are chronically depressed. So we forgot how to smile inside and then to put it outside. I had a good friend of mine when I started bartending in Transylvania when I was working. There was a guy, everybody from the town said that he's a very charismatic guy. It's a, it's a pleasure to stay at his bar and drink what he's giving to you. And I was so curious because everybody in the city was saying about this guy that he was a very, very funny and charismatic guy. So I started looking for him, searching for him. I stayed at the bar and I, 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 I stayed at the bar and I saw him what he was doing. And what he was doing was like he was always telling jokes. But after he was telling the joke, he was laughing so hard that you were laughing. <laughs> so he was laughing of his own jokes. At some point I didn't hear his jokes, but I was hearing only his laugh. And I, I, I was smiling because of his laugh. So this is the way how you can make people laugh. Because remember, people will not remember what you tell them. People will remember how you made them feel. Think about last time you laughed so hard. You had an amazing experience, you did a stand-up comedy or something and you laughed so hard. Can you remember the next day the jokes? Or you remember just, I had such a great time. I'm not sure what are the jokes, what were the jokes, but it was fun. Because we remember just the feeling. If you make the guests smile, they will remember you like a nice place. Second thing, encourage an optimal spend. When you see a guest entering into your place, into your bar, into your restaurants, how much money do you want to get from him? How much? Maximum. Maximum. All of them. All of them. If, if it's possible, he could borrow from some friends some money to drink some more. Usually instinctively, inst yeah, we do not want to do this. Instinctively, we, we want to take more money and more money. 
But imagine if you go somewhere and go a nice bar, a nice bar, and you have at least some amazing cocktails, and when you finish and the bill comes, you have to pay all your money. And you, you start walking home. And I mean, it was nice, nice cocktails, I will never go there again. Because you, you do not make profit from a guest in his first visit. You start making profit his second visit, his third, his fifth, his tenth visit. When he's a regular, you start making profit out of a guest. If he comes once, you could not make profit about it. So the idea is encourage an optimist fan. Besides, if you tell to a 20-year-old waiter, don't, you don't want to do this for his life. He's doing this only for, for the college now. If you tell him, take more money, take the, all the money at the guest that you can, he do not have the selling skills to do it in a nice way. So he will do it in a very bad way, either for him and for, him, for the guest and for the business. So the main thing is encourage the optimal spend. Provide options. We have this, which is expensive. We have this, which is not so expensive. You're not telling that it's expensive and it's not expensive. But you provide more options. You create the order. I can have this drink with this food goes very well and this dessert is perfect. Don't, don't persuade them to buy. Because at the end when the bill comes, if they are not happy, they will, they will not come back anymore. If they are happy, they are ready to come back. So be, be very careful how you do the upselling. McDonald's is a very good example, they have a good business. When you buy something, they are asking, the, they are telling you, we have also this pie. And leave the decision in your, to you. It's not persuading you, you should try this, uh, this uh, coffee because this coffee is very special and we like it very much and it's so nice and when the bill comes, it's 30 euros the coffee. So think about getting the right amount of money. Don't try to take all the money from the guests are coming. Try to take the right amount of money. Because for somebody $100 would be very expensive, but for others $100 would be very cheap. So you have to, think, to see how you can encourage the optimal spend. This is the second thing that you can do. Third one, provide a reason to return. This can be very simple, but we forgot to do it. It's like when you take the bill and they are saying thank you very much, you can say thank you. I want to see you tomorrow again. It was a pleasure to serve you. Just ask them to come back. It's so simple. And this gives a lot of good results. You can do this, just ask him. Or you can say, next week, we will have a Metallica concert here in uh, our place. So you're invited here. Provide them reasons to return. Think about it. How can I make these guests come back again, and then again, and then again? And this is the way how a waiter, or a bartender, or a barback can be a manager, can help the business working, can increase the sales of the business. You don't have to be a manager and to have the responsibilities and the power of a manager to take this decision to make the business better. You just have to think as a manager. And this, this mentality will follow you for the rest of your life. The moment when you will have a business, you will think like this and you will teach others to think like this, which is pure gold in our society. If you think about how can I make honestly, can I get this guest to come back to my business, how can I, what can I offer to him to come back? And he's coming back, you will have a business. If he's not coming back, your business starts going down. So think about it, how can you make to provide a reason to return? Talking about economics, visual helps understand. So these are the three principles. Make them smile. If you put a smile on people's face, you know that they are happy. Second one, encourage an optimal spend. Take from their pocket the right amount of money. <coughs> Third, provide a reason to return. Encourage them to come back. And without knowing it, I mean, you know it, but you do three things. First, you influence the operations. You make them smile. You influence the staff. How to operate in your business. Secondly, you increase the sales. You teach the staff how to sell. 
by encouraging an optimal spend. And third, you have the marketing. You don't need extra marketing and invest a lot of money in marketing if the stuff is doing the marketing. And with three simple things, the business can be a big success. Because you work on the operations, you work on the sales, and you work in the marketing. So you have to work three things in a simple service strategy. What are the three things that you can do in your business? What are the three simple steps that you can implement in your business so your business will become a better and better and better and bigger success? What are the three simple things that every single person in the staff can learn and can apply so in order for the business to be success? After you think about these three things, after you put them on the paper, after you, you teach everybody how to do it, you have to do this, and this is how you do every single step you teach them, you do role play. After you do the role play, I'm just telling one, one simple secret. You can hire a uh, mystery shopper. After you know that every single staff knows the three things, you hire a mystery shopper or you call a friend. Can you come to my bar and follow only three things? In your experience in my bar, from 1 to 10, how much do my staff make you smile? From 1 to 10, how much do they encourage you to, to spend an optimal spend? From 1 to 10, how much do they provide you a reason to come back? And then you will, you will have some numbers. And with that numbers, you can go back once per week to the staff and say, guys, I'm sorry to say we are very good at making people smile. I appreciate very much this. We are very good at uh, providing a visa, uh, at uh, encouraging an optimal spend. But guys, we have to work on providing a reason to return. Because these are the results we measured this week. Let's see what actions can we take, all of us, in order to increase all three things. Measure it. What you expect, they will respect. If you just tell them this strategy and you are not measuring them, they are saying, okay, one more thing, one more stupid idea that we had. The moment you go back to the numbers and say, okay, we are very good at this and this, but we have to work on this, they are saying, oops, he's serious, okay, we should do it. And if they are not doing one time it's okay, second time you have to pay, third time you are out. You are not a team player. These are the rules for our team. <laughs> They are not so hard. We don't have like uh, 10 rules. We have only 3. If you follow all these 3 rules, the business is a success. So, what can you do with a napkin? Besides holding it or blowing the nose or something? You can create a simple strategy that can make your business a success. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.